Hello Capricorn and welcome to my channel. My name is Nikita Antoine and we will be doing a reading for you today. As always, all of my readings are timeless so when the message finds you and resonates and it's yours at the time in which you find it. So um, I've done your reading today with the Threads of Fate, Weaver Tarot, and Oracle deck so you'll be seeing uh, both the Lumen and the Shadow Editions in your spread today. Uh, let's see what else. And I've also started offering personal readings, so if you would like to see how that is, um, check out the description box and you can find that information there. Uh, so on this, actually, well, on the split, we have boundaries. And then at the bottom of the deck, these guys back. At the bottom of the deck we have the, oh I thought that was in the shadow, um, we have the nine of wands. I, so when I initially picked up this card here I thought it was in the shadow. Um, it's not in the shadow actually. Uh, what, what I was getting from it initially while it was still laying on the deck was that almost like a hermetically sealed something hermetically sealing yourself uh, from outside influences so that you can obtain this key. The Nine of Wands has been coming across here. Okay, there we go. All right, so the Nine of Wands has been coming across as like um, having a key to a door but in order to open that door, you have to use the key. Um, and, and obviously, and, um, but you know, there's sometimes, sometimes there's a little bit of, there can be a hesitancy, you know what I mean? And, and wanting to know, okay, what's on the other side of that door before I open that door. So yes, obviously, but it's a lot easier said than done, um, is what I was, what's trying to come out here. Um, it's interesting because I initially saw this as it being um, <sighs> without external influence. And now that I'm seeing that this is actually not a shadow card, because let me show you, the shadow cards look like that. Um, now, that now that I know that it's not a shadow card, that makes me feel that there is some type of influence that is, I guess, kind of like perhaps maybe giving you, you encouragement to open this door. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, let's get you a Wild Mystic Oracle card for your overall energy. I swear, every time I pull Capricorn's readings, I always get some type of, like, it's a shadow, it's basically a shadow reading. Every time, even in the past when I've readings before. All right, so let's get a Wild Mystic Oracle for Capricorn. That one. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> As I'm talking about every time. All right, so we have, we have this, it's called Communicate. Um, it's the bat. I'm laughing because the first card in your spread is the bat. All right, and it's the shadow. Okay, so your shadow wants to communicate with you. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to think about this. I'm moving into it. I just want to, I feel like that, that was, it's kind of, it's just like a confirmation of, yeah, that your shadow wanting to communicate. Is there anything else that's coming up? We'll see. We'll see what else it has to say later on. All right. So to begin your reading, we're starting off with the shadow. It's very dark. I wish you could see it a little bit more. Um, all right, so this shadow card is speaking to me about, um, 
Okay, it was very strange, strangely coming across as, and I didn't know that this is actually like a thing, but it was talking about an unawakened shadow because I'm seeing this bat here as opposed, as opposed to this one. This one is in flight. It's using its echolocation to communicate. This one here is almost like in a hibernation. It's not awakened yet. So it's talking to me about how there is a an aspect of your shadow. And I wanna say like with with this card presenting itself as the as the main energy coming up front, I wanna say that that you are like a, sh a shadow worker like you d you do the work you delve into your shadows you go into that um subconscious that moon energy and and you do ex you do explore but this is talking about there's there's some aspect there that you um are unaware of it's unawakened and that's not because you don't do the work it's it's just simply because it hasn't it hasn't been shown to you yet it, this aspect of your shadow hasn't yet um come out of the hibernation in order to communicate with you um uh, and wildly enough it was talking about i don't know if the moon has a shadow okay it was talking about the moon having a shadow as well and i don't know if the moon can have a shadow. I'm trying to think about it physically because right the the light of, so the shadow that we perceive as being on the moon is actually like the earth's the earth passing in front of the the moon. I don't know. There's something there about that. Um and I'm wanting to say that No, there's something about I can't I'm been, I was trying to reach it before and it's I don't know I feel like it's something like I don't know it's it's not obtainable by me it, it's not being communicated to me what the shadow of the moon is or at least what's in the shadow of the moon I don't know but moving on so we're coming up with I love that the nine of wands was at the bottom of the deck of your um, spread. But this one, the nine of wands in this presentation is the shadow. So it's talking about this aspect of your shadow has yet to reveal some type of key that is going to allow you to open up to open up a, a new door within your psyche. Because we're talking about all about the moon energy. So it's something in your in your psyche that this shadow wants to present to you. And with and it kind of goes along with the lines of like how even though you're presented with the key, it does take you, like you are the one that has to open that door. But in this case, it's like that key, that key hasn't yet been presented. It's, it's talking about like, this is not in your awareness or at least like, like yet, it's not yet in your awareness that you have this part of you Okay, let's explore what that part, that, that part being, okay, hang on, <clears throat> getting a little, a little jumbled here. All right, so we're coming up next with this weaver energy. And I think that that's what this, this shadow wants to communicate to you, your ability to weave your own like time timeline essentially what it's talking about so the weaver energy speaks of creating your own story 
And I'm no initially off the bat, I noticed off the bat. I noticed um so you see these this like triple moon shape here. There's a lot of moon energy here. Uh, the moon talks a lot about things that are unseen, um, unknown to you. It can even speak about illusions as well. I'm gazing into that, seeing if that has something to do with this, because this Ouroboros here. Okay. So the Ouroboros talks about kind of like, there's a lot of um, almost like a karmic, karmic cycling that that's been going through. So because we're coming here next with the justice card uh, and justice talks to me about karma and there's a lot of swords in the deck too, not in the deck, but in your spread. And this to me is speaking about kind of like, it's talking about karmic cycles. Okay, so the shadow that is in hibernation right now holds a key to, okay, to unlocking, we're unlocking something that has to do with a karmic cycle in your, in your story, in your storyline. Because the weaver also speaks about well, it speaks about creating your own story, writing your own story here. This is almost like an unwriting or, and I don't even want to say deleting because it's not, it's not a deleting. It's almost like going back through and I don't know. There's, there's a distinction there between unwriting versus like deleting. Almost like, because a delete, deletion in, an, in essence, says that it did exist. It existed, it's now deleted. An unwriting talks about kind of like it never, never existing is what it's speaking about. So <laughs> that kind of points me to perhaps, especially because that moon energy was here before and I was trying to reach into is, is that is are these karmic cycles or things that you feel as though you're like trapped in loops in a loop of are they an illusion is is what you feel your story being portrayed as is that is that an illusion illusion did it actually ever exist what brought it into existence because I'm wanting to say that it, it almost like it doesn't exist. It's wanting to come outside of that. I don't know. That's really trippy. So on. <laughs> this is such an elusive reading. Okay. <laughs> All right, so on your second row, we're having, so we have the justice card that's coming out. And this, look at all of this dark, the darkness. There's something about like stepping into the darkness okay this might I might be jumping forward ahead a bit but that's just how that's just how these good things go there's okay so we're ending this this entire row we're ending it off with the four of swords and the four of swords oh my gosh this is like we're coming to the end before we there's a lot of especially because we're talking about a storyline so it's almost like reading the end of the story and then coming back to the beginning to read, to read the, what the hell? All right. 
the unwritten. All right. So this, there was, there's something here about these, these swords, especially even in this four swords energy, they, they initially to me, they did, they look like they don't have handles. Like the swords are unable to be maneuvered or handled in any way because they don't because if you were to hold them you would end up like cutting up your hands right so it's speaking about allowing yourself to go into because we're talking about stepping into the darkness so it's allowing yourself to go into a space where the swords are free to I guess almost in a sense like just free to be so that that points me in a direction of the mind space almost being free to wander if you will free to explore this shadow it's like in 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 a space of meditation perhaps sitting in solitude in quiet Oh, it's interesting because we were talking earlier before about kind of like being hermetically sealed, excluding yourself from all external influences. There is something, there is some type of influence. I want to say that that influence is a, is a internal influence, especially with the, the bat coming up. It's, it's talking about your shadow, your shadow's influence. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it takes me a second. But your shadow's influence, if to in order to see that, there is a space that you need to go into in order and allow the mind, but allow the mind to wander is what it's talking about. Because then you'll be able to recognize the patterns okay here we go jesus christ that took me a while all right so you'll be able to recognize these patterns this is almost talking about the thought patterns that are creating this illusion of you being in karmic like karmic cycles is what it's talking about it's like you you are the okay you are the narrator of your own story right and so you have that power to, to unwrite it. And it's talking about in order to, in order to do that, you need to be able to go into that space and almost like view yourself. I was going to say like a third person viewing, but it's like, you, it's just, it's talking about being very self-aware, being able to. It's like letting go, okay, letting go of your sight. Because the bat doesn't use its sight in order to see into the shadow. It uses, um, oh my God, it uses sound, which is also what the sword's energy is. It's air, it's air, so it's sound. Using sound in order to locate right especially because in order to locate that key that is needed to release you from the illusion of all of these like karmic cycles that are not actually like real is what it's coming across as they're not real it's kind of like locking yourself into a paradigm that's not actually like it's not your story. And that's what your shadow wants to communicate to you. Your shadow wants to communicate. There's, there's something about your story that is not, it's not, I guess in a sense, I'm not saying that it's not yours because there is I mean, in a sense, you did create it. You created it with your own mind. However, your mind has created something that is, 
almost in a sense, like it's blocking you from using that key in order to like go into a new, oh my gosh, going into a new story. Because in order to, I mean, you're, you're wanting to go into that brand, you're wanting to go into that new story, but it's almost like you don't even know that you do. <sighs> okay. This is a tricky one. There is a lot of kind of like trickery, inner trickery energy in this, but it's, it's, it's as though you've created your own trick on yourself because it, it has a lot to do with the sword energy, which is speaking about your mental space, your mind space. It's like you've created your own mental prison is what it's talking about. And your shadow, which is outside of that mental prison. I want to say that that story, the story that you're wanting to be in is because you haven't yet unlocked that door and opened that door. It's, it's in hibernation. So one, you have to find the key. Then you have to be able to, I guess in a sense, have the courage in order to look at the thoughts, look at the patterns of what is kind of keeping you ensnared in a sense. So I was, I was talking about how these two are, they're kind of like, they're booking, book ending the second row. In the center, we have the six of swords in nature. Um, and the six of swords traditionally, <clears throat> it talks about um, like moving, moving into a better, like a better space for yourself. Um, kind of like leaving leaving behind a lot of things that are would be injustice to you. Well, leaving those things behind in order to go to a space in which you are um, it's just, it's just a better a better space, a better mental space, if you will, because a lot of this stuff has to do with the mind. So. We have the Six of Swords, and then it, we're also having the the Nature. And this Nature card, it talks about actually your perception and having like a well-rounded view of the world around you. So speaking of kind of like you have having a, 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 high, a higher perception I was gonna say aspect, it's not aspect, a higher perspective, which is which you can talk about being able to see in the higher realms, and then having like this worldly perspective. So, you know, the plane that you live on at this moment, and then also this lower perspective too, which talks about the being aware of this aspect, this shadow. But here. It's almost in essence speaking about leaving behind the sight. And the pine, this is so intriguing. The pine cone talks about the pineal, pineal gland and we're speaking of the bat as like, it doesn't use sight in order to locate uh, the target in a sense, what it's, what it's looking for. And here it's speaking about how it's almost, this is what I was talking about earlier about how these swords don't have handles. It's talking about leaving behind the traditional way that you would um, look for this. Because before we were, we were talking about how you are a shadow worker, you do the work, you are self-aware, you're, but it's this, 
this aspect of your shadow that is in hibernation it does not it's not gonna you're not gonna find it with these tra the, with the traditional methods that you use in order to locate them and you know, you know what I mean like integrate it's talking about laying down this site your pineal site and allowing your mind to kind of, oh, this is very bizarre. I don't, it's kind of uncomfortable too, because it's like, why, I don't understand, I'm not understanding why you would want your mind to kind of like go a little, like haywire almost in a sense, like allowing your mind to, to I guess in essence, like you, you have to, in order to understand how your mind has control, right? Because these swords with it, without them having handles, that means that you don't have the control. The thoughts have the control. So in order to see that the thoughts have control of these illusion based cycles, you have to allow, you have to, it's almost like You're gonna see it. You're gonna see that that is what's actually happening. By turning off, oh, this is so bizarre. I don't understand why you would turn off your pineal gland. <laughs> By turning that off, you're gonna see. It's, it's like, okay, so if you are highly intuitive you know what i mean you use your inner sight you use your third sight to see all the things around you in order to i guess in a sense elevate your other senses you would have to turn off the one that is being used the most right and then when you do turn off that you're you're now because you're not having because you're not depending on that your other senses which I want to say have something to do with sounds, especially because this in this Six of Swords energy, we have the jaw here. So it's something to do with sound is going to, it's going to, that aspect, that, um, that sense is going to be increased. And when that sense is increased, that's when you're able to um, locate the, this, the key. It's talking about the key. This is kind of a wildly bizarre reading. Um, all right, so I don't know what the sound is. Using sound to locate I'm, I'm trying to determine if that is like a, um, like a literal, like a literal translation. Like, do you, is there, is there, so, is there something like with sound that you have to literally use in your practice or is that, or is that like a, a metaphor for utilizing your other senses in order to do shadow work other than your inner sight? I'm wanting to say that it's a metaphor. But I can't touch it. There's something about it that I, I can't I can't penetrate. But you know why? It's because when I'm looking at the cards, I'm using my own pineal gland. I'm using my inner sight to try to see. And I think that that's what it's speaking of is that you can't, that sense while valuable is not going to be the method 
in order to find this, the key to these uh, a new, a key, it's, it's the key to understanding that this is an illusion. That's what it's talking about. What in the world? Okay, Capricorn. <laughs> that is it for you. <laughs> All right. I hope that you enjoyed this reading. I hope that you understood it <laughs> more than I did. Um, and as always, it's a pleasure to read for you. And I will see you next time. Bye.